Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, The Purpose Driven Homestead. Today, we're gonna to show you how this little gadget right here can save you a ton of money during the winter heating your house. Now, before we get any further into the video today, make sure that you subscribe to our channel, click that like button so that we can share this with others. It really does help us a ton. Everything that we're gonna show you today is listed in the description below. So if you want links to those so you can find them yourselves, uh, feel free to jump down there, grab them. Uh, we would love to have you purchase it through our links because it really does help our channel grow. All right, let's get started, guys. So this is actually a little item that we discovered about four years ago, maybe five now. But this has been a game changer when it comes to heating our house. Now, as many of you probably know, if you follow our channel, we live in the Midwest and it gets pretty cold here. I mean, it's not as cold as some places, but it gets pretty cold here. It gets into the negatives quite often, definitely in the single digits and, and uh, low double digits. So when it comes to the winter, it gets pretty cold where we live. We started thinking about how can we cut down on our electricity? How can we cut down on our heating bill? What are some ways that we can do it? Now we heat with propane. We're far enough out in the middle of nowhere. We actually heat with propane. So we were trying to find ways that we could cut down on that propane given how expensive it's gotten, especially this year. So this little gadget is actually a neat little feature. I don't know why they don't put these in every single house if it's uh, an electric dryer unit that they're using, because this thing is amazing. It absolutely, I don't know why I never thought of this before, but one thing most of us have, now if you use, now's a great time to say this, if you use uh, anything besides electric heat, this is not recommended. But most of us are using one of these dryers that is an electric dryer. Maybe it's uh, a newer one like this one. This one's probably four years old. Uh, or you may have an older one. Uh, they all run on the same principle. They're all using an, an element, an electric element that heats up, it creates heat, it then uses a fan to push that air through your, your clothes that are tumbling constantly. It heats the clothes up, the clothes then dry out as the dry hot air is blowing through them. The moisture is taken outside of your house through a vent and that vent is what you then use to then kind of exit it out and your clothes come out nice and dry. And that's absolutely great during the summer when you want all that hot air outside. You don't wanna heat your house up during the summer, you're working hard to cool it. In most cases, most people will use an air conditioner and that's just, you're trying to get the heat all out of your house. The difference is, however, during the winter, why are we wasting all of that heat by pushing it outside through that vent? So this little diverter is a lifesaver. This diverter allows you to take that hot air that's coming out through the vent that would normally go straight outside. It's now coming through this diverter and allows you to push all of that hot air back into your house. Now, most people have some type of humidifier in their home. It just gets too dry when you're heating with wood heat or with propane or with natural gas. All that hot air that you're using is drying the air out. So most people have a humidifier like maybe this one or possibly even a whole house humidifier like this one that's built into your ductwork. Those are fantastic, but you're already venting all of this hot, moist air outside during the winter. Why do that? You're paying for it once, why not use it not just to, to, to dry your clothes out, but to also heat your home? So you can see this thing has a diverter right here. So this is what allows you to then close it off, or open it up. When it's closed like this, all that hot air is coming up, going through your pipe, just like it normal would. It's bypassing this diverter and is going straight out to the outside. But when you take this and you divert that hot air, like so, now that is venting all of that hot air, that hot moist air into your home. When this thing is running, it is pumping out significant amounts of heat which is probably a couple of points. I'm gonna make this caveat again. I know I've said it before, but if you have a natural gas heater or natural gas uh, uh, dryer or a propane dryer, do not use this method. Don't use this diverter because you're gonna wind up using this thing to divert poisonous gases into your house. That's not what you want. But for an electric dryer, there's none of those fumes. It's just a heating element like you would have in your house just to heat your home. So this thing is designed for electric dryers. It does, it works wonders. It pushes all that air out. Now, again, that's the first caveat. Don't use this for a natural gas or propane dryer. 
The other thing that I'll caveat at this point is you got to make sure that you're keeping your lines clean. Now, before anybody puts in the comments, oh, that's a horrible way of doing your dryer uh, line. I get that. Our design, though, the way this is set up, we had to do it this way because the house was designed poorly and it has all of the vents for the dryer on the other side. So we have a long run that we have to do here. The only way that we can vent this up and get it out into the open was to do it this way. So that's fine for me. I have no problem just going in every, every uh, month or so and cleaning out in here. This is a poor design, but it's the only way that we could do it. You wanna make sure this is pointed out. So make sure that when you put this in, there's a place for this to blow out and away from everything. The other thing is if you're in a small, now we have a smaller, you see this is the size of our laundry room. It's pretty small. So you wanna make sure that you keep the door open to your laundry room, room at all times. So that way that hot air isn't building up inside your laundry room. You want that to be able to vent to the outside and get to the rest of your home. So that way it's heating your house and all that moisture doesn't get stuck so the condensation will actually build up on your walls and stuff if you don't leave the door open. So you want to make sure you leave your door open and, ha and if you have a really small room or if it's really tight, you may even want to put a small fan in there so that way the, the air can circulate outside of that room. All right, let's talk a little bit about the components or the parts of this dryer heat deflector. So what you have here is a box and everything's linked in the description below. But it comes with actually some plastic clamps that uh, you would secure to your hoses. Uh, I actually put in larger metal clamps because I think those are actually better. They're less likely to break. Uh, and I can really ratchet them down to the degree that I need to on this. So I'd highly recommend you replace the ones that come with it with these metal ones. But you can use the ones if you're comfortable with it. I just didn't, didn't want to do that. So the first thing that you can see on this box is that it has a screen. Now this screen is just like you would find in your dryer. It's a lint screen. You can even see in here it says clean filter after every use. We actually do clean ours probably every other use. I'm not sure you have to clean it after each use unless you just have a lot of lint, but we clean ours probably every other use. Now this piece comes off and that's how you clean it. So you can see here, pops off. And one thing that I do recommend uh, I'm not, it's not the best job I've ever done, but I went through and I siliconed around this. You can see these white spots right here. I actually added some additional silicone to the bottom all around the side. Instead of having these four dots of silicone, I decided to go all around and silicone it. That helps keep the lint from, from blowing through. Uh, it doesn't do bad as it is, but I just decided I wanted to do that. So this screen is what keeps your lint from coming through. Now there'll still be a tiny, tiny amount that comes through. Just like when you walk in your laundry room, you'll probably find some lint dust occasionally. That's just life. Some things still make it through this tiny mesh, but this actually works really well. So that's the first piece. So you've got your lint screen. It actually has these pieces right here. It slides into this part and then these hooks back here, these hooks back here are actually what locks it into place. The next piece you're going to see is the actual diverter. This is pretty important because this is what allows you to not have to take this off in the spring and in the fall to try to redirect things. It has a little handle here. And if you notice, that's what closes it off. So now the diverter is closed and it actually diverts all of the heat outside now. So like say during the summer, when you don't want any extra heat in your house, this diverter will allow this heat to come all the way through this, this hose and it, it continues to come out and go all the way out outside your house. So this diverter is very important. It's the most important piece of this. When you close that up, all that heat is going outside, just like it normally would if you didn't have this in place. But during the winter and fall, if you wanted to take and open this up, now this pushes all of the heat that's coming from this hose, it hits this and is deflected out where you want the heat. So we don't want to waste all that heat going outside during this process. We want to make sure it turns and comes in. So that's what that deflector does. And there's actually a little piece in the back back here. I don't know if you can see it or not but it allows some heat to still slip by. And the reason you want to do that is if for some reason you had, I don't know, you forgot to change the lint screen or close the lint screen 
and it was not venting, you'd want some way for the air to get out. So there's a little flap back here. We'll pull this off real quick. There's a little flap right back here that is up normally. And if the pressure gets too high, it flops down. And that allows air to still flow by and go outside as a safety mechanism. And then that's the inside of the box. You've got your outside vent, kind of going out to the outside vent. This goes back to your dryer where all the hot air is coming through and it blows through. When you have it closed, it's blowing directly out to the outside. Then when you have the diverter diverting the air, it blows it all inside, allowing you to heat your house for essentially free. Now this is all things you were gonna do anyway. Unless you're off grid and you're not using any electricity, if you're using an electric dryer, then this is what, it, you know, you're wasting all of this electricity anyway. You were using it to heat your clothes, to dry the clothes, and then it was all going right out this vent all the way out to outside. Why not use that for something else? Why not use that to heat your house? So we're gonna show you how it works in just a few minutes. I wanted to be able to objectively measure the temperature differences so that you could see for yourself. So I picked up this Ames thermal imaging camera a while back. It's actually a really neat tool. I got this from Harbor Freight. It's pretty cheap compared to say something like a FLIR or some of these others that you can find online that you can hook up to your smartphone or you can even have a standalone version like this is here. This is made by Ames. I'll try to drop a description in the description below. Again, it's from Harbor Freight. The power uh, button is at the top up here. You just hold that for a few minutes, it comes on. This is a color screen, you'll see in a second. There's actually two cameras on here. There's a visual camera, so that way you can actually see what's on the screen here. And then there's an infrared camera as well. And you can see those are the two cameras uh, in the screen there. So the big one at the top is actually the, the regular camera so that you can see what you're looking at. The reticle in the middle is what it uses to sense heat. So you can see there in the top section up there, it's saying about 67, 68 degrees right now. That's whatever you put that reticle on, that's what it's going to show. Now I've turned the dryer on. It's going to warm up a little bit here, but you can see in the picture that there's, you know, it's already increased in temperature quite a bit. And I apologize. It's a little bit further away, but I couldn't get my camera to focus on it unless it was a little bit further away. Um, but you can see there, it's already warming up quite nicely. You've got a min and a max at the bottom. So it'll record whatever the highest temperature is anywhere that you point that reticle so that you have some reference point for min and maxes as well. So it's already up to 80 degrees or so. It started out in about 66 degrees. So the dryer's already warming up and you can see those heat signatures coming through on the infrared camera as well. So it's pretty neat how this thing works and I wanted you to be able to see where it started. So it started at that 66 degree mark and it's already up to about 85 or so. Now this isn't a terribly cold day today, but I thought I'd show you an example of how much heat is just being pumped out of this dryer right now. So you see all that humidity, it's about 38, 39 degrees outside right now. It's rainy actually, so there's a lot of humidity in the air already. But you can just see that this dryer is pumping out tons of heat and water vapor, which would be humidity inside the house. And again, during the summer, that's probably fine. But during the winter like this, we really want to have this thing pumping all of that inside the house. So let's go, we'll change it real quick. I'll come back out and I'll show you what it looks like when we point into the house. You know, I figured before I did that, I'd actually do the same trick where you could kind of see how much heat was coming out of that. So you can see even coming out of that vent, which is pretty far away from the, the dryer itself, it's still coming out at 80 degrees it's heating up the ground, even the ground around it's in the 80s. All right, let me get this in so that my, uh, my little gadget here doesn't get fried. All right, we're back inside now. We just came back in. I dried off my, my little camera as best I could. It still has some water droplets on it, but it seems like it's gonna be okay. Now, now if we see this, we are pumping out, you know, the heat, the dryer is definitely up to speed now. It's, it's, up, to, it's up to temperature. When it first starts out, it's got a lot of cold, wet clothes in there, so it tends to, uh, you know, be a little bit cooler. But as it starts drying the clothes out, the temperature rises. So we got it at 104 degrees or so, probably at the peak, somewhere in that range. I don't know where I point it here. Yeah, so it looks like it's running between 101 and 104 degrees. All right, now let's flip this 
real quick. So we're going to come in here. I'm going to flip this over. We're going to divert that back in now. So if I get up on this, you can see the what's coming out of there is 95 degrees or so. Now that it's, get, it's letting some of the hot air out, starting to cool off just a hair. That's because all the hot air is now blowing in this direction. You can actually see that my screen here is fogging up because it's getting all this humidity in here. So let's go outside and check it out now what it looks like compared to what it looked like before. As you can see, we've turned it off inside and there's still just a little bit of steam coming out. But when we put up our, our infrared camera here, you can see that it's already cooling off. A lot less heat coming off down here. So you can tell that that vent, while still warm, is in the process of cooling off because we've diverted almost all of the, of the heat back inside into the house. So this is all cooling off. That vent will stay a little hot, right? So, I mean, it's letting some of the air pass by. Just again, that's that safety mechanism. So that for some reason, if you were not to, if you were to forget to close that or to clean that screen off, it has a way for that heat to get by so it doesn't overheat. But I think we can clearly say that this makes a huge difference in the amount of heat that gets out of our house. All right, so now we back, we're back inside and you can see that, I mean, this thing really is picking up the temperature again. It's up to about 104 degrees and it'll get hotter and hotter. Probably tops out around 110 or so. As your dryer dries that, you know, it's got sensors in it as well, or if you've got it on time dry or whatever, it won't get that hot. So you don't have to worry about that, but it's just pumping all of this heat back into the house now. So it's 39 degrees outside. We were wasting all of that heat. This thing now gets us to a point where we can use all of that heat and humidity inside our house. We're paying for it anyway, right? We were already drying our clothes using this anyway. If you've got a decent sized family, you've got, you know, a couple, two, three, four kids, well, to you know, a couple of parents, you already have enough heat being generated just by using your, your dryer in a normal everyday situation. Why not use that to your advantage and use the heat that you're already producing, you're already paying for, use that to heat your home. One last point that I'll bring up. So again, I can't say it often enough, if you don't have electric, if you're not using uh, an electric dryer, if you're using natural gas, don't use this. It'll pump carbon monoxide into your house. You don't want that. So don't do this. That's my caveat. The second is make sure that you check these lines and make sure you've got a good way of setting this up. And if you have to do it in a creative way like I've done it, then make sure you're cleaning this out every month, checking it, making sure that it doesn't get clogged because you know, pushing all this up and around back down, it's obviously not optimal. It's not how you should be doing it, but that's the only way that we can use uh, this, little, uh, this little gizmo. So that's my second thing. The third thing is you will find that lint will build up in here. That's okay, you take this off, you clean it out, easy to do. Make sure if you're gonna use this, use it in a well ventilated area. Then the last thing that I'll share with you is if you are gonna use this and you've got a fairly small space, you can put a fan right in here to push that air forward and out of the space that it's in. You do not wanna keep your door closed to a laundry room or something like that with this going because all it will do is create mildew. It's pumping humidity. You wouldn't wanna do that with a humidifier either. Nothing that pumps humidity, your shower. You've got a, you've got a fan in your shower uh, in all likelihood or a window that allows that humid air to get out of the house. And that's what you wanna do here is you wanna pump it, but you wanna pump it out of this one room and into all of the other rooms. So make sure that when this thing is going, you've got a door open and potentially a fan going to push that air out. All right, guys, I hope that this has helped you some way to save some money. I think you're gonna see significant heating advantages and also cost savings for your, heat, for your heating unit if you use this, because again, it's all found money. It's all found money because you were already doing this to dry your clothes, 
why not use it to heat your home? Some people have asked, how can I support you guys? Maybe you don't wanna uh, you know, give to our subscribe star account, which we do have one, or Patreon, but if a simple way that you can help support the channel is subscribe and then also check out the links below. If you buy through those links, I will tell you, we get a tiny, tiny, tiny commission of anything that you buy through that link. So, you know, I think these things are like 24 bucks, so they were at the time that I made this video. So we might get a buck out of that, or we might get 50 cents or something like that. Uh, it's not much, I don't know how much it is exactly, but my point is it's not a ton, but it does help a little bit to support the channel. Uh, I will also link this as well if I can find it online. Uh, but those are really it, guys. You just need a screwdriver to put this stuff on, an extra length of hose, and I'll link that in the description as well, and then this uh, diverter box, and that's it. That's the whole project. I hope you've enjoyed this guys. If you have, leave a, you know, click that like button, subscribe to our channel, and check out some of these other videos that you might like right up here. And we'll see you next time on the Purpose Driven Homestead.